And a prophetic focus for the month comes from 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 12. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 12 is where we are getting our prophetic focus for the month of March. And the Bible says, this is Apostle Paul speaking. He says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. So being in the ministry of the Lord is a great privilege. Amen. It is a great thing. It is a great privilege. Because who doesn't know that God can do without any of us? But in his mercy and grace, he has chosen to work with us and through us. What a blessing. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And so our prophetic theme for the month of March is, it is a great thing to serve the Lord. <laughs> it is a great thing to serve the Lord. Why don't you say that to your neighbor? It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Amen. And in this service, I'm speaking on the subject, serve the Lord your God. Serve the Lord your God. And we are reading from Exodus 23 and verse 25 and Job 36 and verse number 11. Exodus 23 and verse number 25. Where the Bible says, so you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. And Job 36 and verse number 11. Job 36 and verse number 11. The Bible says if they obey and serve him they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Serve the Lord your God. Please, two key points very quickly. Number one, serving God is every believer's covenant responsibility. That we should serve God is our covenant obligation as believers. Going back to that Exodus 23 and verse number 25, the Bible is very clear. It says, you shall serve the Lord your God. You shall. Serving God is a shall matter. Shall. That means you have no choice in the matter. If you are a child of God, if you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you are under obligation to serve him. In Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, Jesus speaking just before his ascension, he, he said to the apostles, he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me. So all recipients of the Holy Spirit are under obligation to render service to the Lord. Amen. To render service to the Lord. He says, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and there's, it, it says, you shall be witnesses. That is, you can't receive the Holy Spirit and not be a witness. If you're a recipient of the anointing, you must use that anointing to serve God. Lift your right hand and say, I will serve the Lord my God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Secondly, serving God is not a gift, but rather a choice. Serving God is not a gift. Serving God is a choice. A choice that one has to make, and it is a personal choice. Amen. In Joshua 24, verse 15, you remember what Joshua taught the children of Israel at the end of his ministry and leadership over them. Joshua 24 and verse 15. Now he said, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day 
whom you will serve. Meaning, serving God is a matter of choice. And I'm saying to us today that we must make a choice for the service of the house of the Lord. Decide that you're going to be a committed servant of the Lord. The Bible says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable. Now here it is. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Very quickly here. Let's examine what I'm calling platforms for serving the Lord. Platforms for serving the Lord. In the interest of time, let's pick five of them very quickly. Number one, the prayer platform. The prayer platform. The prayer platform of service is about engaging in what we call kingdom promotion prayers kingdom advancement prayers that is the believer engaging in prayer for the promotion of the work of god for the promotion of the work of god just like earthly governments cannot run without money the kingdom of god cannot run without prayers that is why we are called upon to pray without ceasing. We must pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 17. It says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We must pray without ceasing even for the work of God, for the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus put it this way. He's teaching the disciples on how best to pray. In Matthew chapter 6, you remember that? Verses 9 going down to 13 but I want us to look at verses 9 to 10 Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 10 Jesus said in this manner therefore pray yes our father in heaven now here it is hallowed be your name now verse 10 now look at this it says your kingdom come kingdom come is a prayer matter it says your will be done on earth as it is in heaven the kingdom of God cannot thrive without the prayer ministry of the saints. Without the prayer ministry of the saints. That is why when you read Pauline letters, the letters that Apostle Paul wrote to the various churches and individuals, you see that he was always committed to praying for the church, praying for the saints, praying for the believers, praying for the work of the ministry. And that we also must do. And some of the key areas of prayer in this regard should be as follows. Please take this down. Number one, praying for the building and growth of the church. Praying for the building and growth of the church. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, this is Jesus speaking to the Apostle Paul, uh, Apostle Peter, sorry, Apostle Peter. He says, I also said to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, now here it is, I will build my church. So we need to pray that the Lord will build his church as promised. And then he said, and the guests of Hades, or the guests of hell, shall not prevail against it. That Second part of that verse is showing us that the church has enemies. Enemies that want to destroy the church. Enemies that want to stifle the progress and the advancement of the church of the living God. And it is prayer that will silence the agenda and the maneuvers of darkness against the church. Is it making sense here? So the believer must engage in what we call spiritual warfare prayers for the church spiritual warfare prayers against the guests of hell 
Apostle Paul speaking, he said, for we wrestle not against human beings or against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and all the spiritual forces of evil. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 12. So he already is telling us that there is war. There is warfare. There is a battle. Yes, the church, the church will be fought against by the forces of darkness. And we have a responsibility as children of God to stand in prayer on the behalf of the church. If you understand what I'm saying, shout hallelujah. The second thing, thing I believe we need to pray about is that we must pray for new converts, new believers to be established. We must pray for the establishment of those that are coming to the serving knowledge of Jesus. We are a soul winning church. And as a soul winning church, we must endeavor to pray that the saints, the believers, people that are newly introduced to this life in Christ Jesus must be established must be established must be established somebody shout hallelujah the Bible speaking in uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verses 6 to 7 if we may take that from the NIV Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 to 7 Apostle Paul is saying so then just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Not all who receive Christ continue in him. So he says you must continue to live your lives in him. Now in verse number 7, he says rooted and built up in him. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with with thanks, thankfulness. Now, let me have this verse in the New King James Version, verse number seven. It says, rooted and built up in him. Now, here it is, and established in the faith. Established in the faith. It should be our prayer that the saints will be established in the faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> what else should we pray about? Number three, we must pray for the needs of the saints that the needs of the saints are going to be met we must pray that the needs of the members of the church are going to be met the bible says he supplies all our need according to his riches and glory by christ jesus philippians chapter 4 and verse 19 praying always for the saints that their needs are going to be met that their needs are going to be met. Number four, we must pray for fresh fire and revelation on our altars in all our churches. We must pray for fresh fire and revelation that every time we gather like this, we are going to experience fresh fire. Amen? That the ministration of the word of God by our pastors is going to be with fresh fire and fresh revelation. Fresh fire and fresh revelation. You understand that? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I believe that the saints should also pray for their pastors and all church leaders. For their pastors and all church leaders. It was Apostle Paul who said now and again, pray for us. Pray for me. Pray for me. For example, um, in Ephesians chapter 6, let's read verse 18 to 20. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. In verse 18, he says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So that is a core for prayers for the saints and then he says and for me and for me in verse 19 he says and for me pray for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel somebody shout hallelujah he was not ashamed to call for the prayers of the saints for himself for himself that means the saints 
must remember to pray for their pastors and church leaders. Their pastors and other church leaders. Are you going to pray for your pastors? Are you going to pray for church leaders? Yes, it's important. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, in, um, in 2 Thessalonians, I think, chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, Apostle Paul put it this way. He said, finally, brethren, now here it is, pray for us. Have you seen that? Pray for us. He's mobilizing prayers for, for the church leadership. He says, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. Now look at verse 2. And that, he says, pray that we may be delivered, hear this, from unreasonable and wicked men. Yes. That is one of the things to pray for when you are praying for your pastors and the church leaders. Pray for their deliverance. <laughs> Praying for the deliverance of the pastors, the deliverance of the leaders. Yes, that God will deliver and protect them, for example, from snares like sexual immorality, the love of money, and then godly desire for fame and popularity. Is it making sense here? Yes, sir. He says, we must pray that Paul and the rest of them will be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Unreasonable and wicked men. Lastly, I believe that we should also pray for the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. The church is not a political club. The church is not like a secular university where the move of God is not needed for a lecturer to deliver his lectures, for the university professor to deliver his lessons. He doesn't need the Holy Ghost. But in the church, we need the ministry of the Spirit. So we need to pray for the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit in the church. The manifestation of the power of God. The sick must be healed. The oppressed must be delivered. Because that is the pattern Jesus set for the church. In Acts chapter 10 and verse number 38. You know the verse. Acts chapter 10 and verse number 38. Talking about how Peter began to talk about Jesus. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. In the house of the Lord, those who are oppressed by the devil must be healed, must be delivered and that can only be possible by the ministry of the Holy Spirit because the Bible says it's not by might nor by power. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse number 6. It is never by might. It is never by human effort. Apostle Paul speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 3 to 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 3 to 4. Put the verse there for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses, let, let's begin from verse number 4 going into 5. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 4 to 5. Now hear this. He says, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. Human wisdom cannot heal anybody. Human wisdom cannot deliver anybody from demonic oppressions. He says, and my speech and my preaching when I came to you were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in what? Demonstration of the spirit and power. Demonstration of the spirit and power. Demonstration of the spirit and power. Why? Look at verse number five. Look at verse number five. It says that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody's changing levels in the name of Jesus Christ. And I know you're one of them. Can I hear your loudest shout of amen here? Amen. Glory be to God. We must pray that signs and wonders will abound in the church. Because we know that human solutions have limitations. The children of Israel needed a boat 
a canoe, a ship, or a bridge to cross the Red Sea. But none of them were available. That's how life is. Human solutions have limitations. Amen? But God still taught Moses. He said, tell the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 14 verse 15 to go forward. To go forward. Bridge or no bridge, they must go forward. Go forward. In this life, we need more than human effort. We need the power of the spirit. The power of the spirit. And somebody is receiving ministration this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If that is you, can I hear your loud and shout of amen? amen? Platforms for serving God very quickly. Number one, the prayer platform. Number two, the sorrow winning platform. The sorrow winning platform. The sorrow winning platform. The sorrow winning platform. Serving God also entails bringing people both to Christ and to church. Both to Christ and to church. Many times we want to bring them to Christ, but we don't bring them to, to church. It's like a woman who has gone to the labor or to deliver a child and then they leave the child there. And they tell the nurse and the doctor, bye-bye, see you later. That's not what we do, sir. You bring them to Christ and to church. You bring them to Christ and to church. It's a two-dimensional approach. You bring them to Christ and to church. Bring them to Christ and to church. And I want to say that soul winning is the main business of the church. The main business of the church is not for us to be laying hands on ourselves and prophesying of ourselves. Well, that is part of the game. But I want you to know that the main business of the church is to win souls for the Lord. In Matthew chapter 18 and verse 11. Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 11. Jesus was teaching and he put it this way. Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 11. For the son of man has come to save that which was what? Which was lost. He came to save that which was lost. That was his main agenda. That you should prosper was not his main agenda. Huh? That you should say to Maritale, you've made it your main agenda, but it shouldn't. Thank God for marital settlements. Thank God for some levels of prosperity, financially and otherwise. But I want you to know that the main reason why Jesus had to come was to save people from their sins. The salvation of the soul of man. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. The Bible says, you shall call his name Jesus, my God. For he will save his people from their sins. He will save his people from their sins. We are in that business as a church. I said we are in that business as a church. I said we are in that business as a church. The business of bringing as many to the serving knowledge of Jesus. The Bible says we are recipients of the ministry of reconciliation. We are recipients of the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 18 to 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 18 to 20. We are recipients of the ministry of of reconciliation somebody shout hallelujah Amen. lift your right hand and say I will win souls for Christ yes every believer is a soul winner every believer is a soul winner now in Luke 14 verse 23 you remember that master said to his servant Luke 14 
and verse 23 he said go out to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in my god compel them to come in that my house may be filled god wants his house filled filled with souls filled with souls filled with multitudes of people but for that to happen his servants must go out to have these people are found and bring them in. Actually, he's using the word compel, meaning that so many of them will not be willing to come, but they have to be compelled. Find every way possible to compel them to come. And one of the greatest ways of compelling them to come is to show them love. To show them what? To show them love. Love them and they will be compelled to come both to Christ and to the church. Number three platform for serving the Lord. I believe that the teaching is very clear, isn't it? Yes. So on the last day, you will not be saying to Jesus, I, I failed to obey because the preacher was not clear. I am very clear. Platforms for serving God. Number one, the prayer platform. Number two, the soul winning platform. Number three, the giving platform. The giving platform, which is about investing our finances and other resources in the work of the ministry. Investing our money and other resources in the work of the ministry. And I want to say, that the work of God is capital intensive, resource intensive. It is very expensive to do the work of God well. Did you hear what I said? It is very expensive to do the work of God well. And that is why every child of God must believe God for financial prosperity financial prosperity because that way you contribute meaningfully towards the advancement of the work of God towards the advancement of the work of God can I have Luke chapter 8 from the new living translation verses 1 to 3 Luke chapter 8 verses 1 to 3 from the new living translation glory be to God now here it is Soon afterward, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his 12 disciples with him. Now hear this. Verse 2, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Verse number 3, now hear this. Now listen to this. It says, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's business manager, and Susanna, now, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. Come on. The Bible says that they contributed from their own resources. Jesus needed the support of those that were around him to do the work of the ministry. They contributed to the ministry of Jesus from their own resources. That is why every child of God must desire to own what? Resources. In church, we don't just clap hands, we also give to the one we are clapping to or clapping for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's clap hands for Jesus. <laughs> now, now, after clapping for Jesus, we must give to Jesus. So there are some Christians when you say, okay, let's clap hands for the Lord. My God. Pa, 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 pa. Let's give to Jesus. They look down as if they didn't hear. I hope you held me well. We must give give to the Lord as part of serving him as part of serving him now in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 9 Proverbs chapter 3 
And verse number nine, if I can have that verse from the King James Version. Proverbs 3, 9, now here it is. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance. Look at that. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Honor the Lord with your substance. That means, number one, as far as I'm concerned, God expects me to have substance. How can he be saying that I should honor him with the substance I have? It means that he's interested in giving me substance. Am I right here? Substance. And once you have it, the Bible says, use it to serve him. Use it to serve him. Use it to serve him. So God's work requires more than anointing. Amen. It requires money and other material resources to advance. Mm. One day, God had spoken to Moses to build him a tabernacle, a sanctuary, if you like. And in order to make that possible, I mean, the man Moses was anointed, no doubt about that. He had the humility. Actually, he was the most humble person on earth, isn't it? The meekest of them all at that time. And yet, God still demanded that the children of Israel were to give physical, material resources for that assignment. In Exodus 25, verses 1 to 9. Exodus 25, verses 1 to 9. Now, here it is. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, what did he say? Look at verse 2. Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. Yes. Serving God includes bringing offerings to the Lord. From everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. What kind of offering? And that is listed from verse number 3 going down to 7. Verse number 3 going down to 7. But let's go to verse number 8. Having listed all the materials, so you see there there's gold, silver, bronze, and the like. And then it says, once they bring this offering, let them make me a sanctuary. So the making of the sanctuary, the building of the work of the ministry requires resource investment. Resource investment. I'm talking to you, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Even in the New Testament, in the ministry of the apostles, the ministry of the early church, people gave their all to the work of the ministry. It is Apostle Paul who is writing to appreciate the Philippian church in Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 to 16. They enjoyed massive support from the saints all across the territory. Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 to 16. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. Look at verse 16. He said, for even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Giving must be continuous. Giving must be once and again, once and again. Not once in a while, <laughs> but once and again, all the time, all the time. We must invest in the work of the Lord. And I want to probably take a moment to appreciate all of you that have been supporting this work with your finances and material resources. My prayer is that the Lord God of heaven, the owner of the church, will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. You believe that, please? Can I hear you loud a shout of amen? amen? Number four, quickly please, platforms for serving the Lord. Number four, talent and skills platform. Talent and skills platform. This is about employing our talents, gifts, skills, and abilities in the promotion of God's work. Amen. 
the making of what God has commanded us to do requires skills and talent investments. So we are talking about spiritual gifts, for example, as listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 10, the nine gifts of the spirit. And then the Bible also talks about the various ministry offices, commonly known as the five-fold ministry in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 11. In verses 12 to 13, it says that is for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. But beyond that, we also have talents, skills, and abilities acquired through training and education. Through training and education. Through training and education. Let us use the same even in the promotion of the work of God. We saw that in the building of the sanctuary back in the Old Testament. Apart from the resources that people gave in Exodus 25, the, the, the passage I gave us, verses 1 to 9, we see that there were some people who were endowed with special skills, special skills. I think we need to read about them in uh, Exodus 31, verses 1 to 6. Can I have it in the New Living Translation or Good News Translation? Exodus 31, verses 1 to 6. Now here it is. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have specifically chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Hur of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him, hear this, with the Spirit of God, giving him, hear this, great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. Expertise in all kinds of crafts. <laughs> He's a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. Verse number five. It says he is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and in curving wood. He is a master at every craft. Bezalel. Verse number six. And I have personally appointed Oholab. Oholiab's uh, son of Hesabach of the tribe of Dan to be his assistant. Moreover, I have given special skill to all the gifted craftsmen so that they can make all the things I have commanded you to make. So everyone must think about how can I use my skills in the promotion and advancement of the work of the ministry. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So for example, in our book ministry, we have brothers and sisters that help us with editing the manuscripts. And they are doing it as a service to the Lord. Amen. I mean, we can take those to professional editors who are going to charge us millions of quatches, but there are people who have come forward to say, we can do this. We can do this. I believe that there is no better editor than, for example, secondary school teachers who teach English. I'm talking about English teachers in secondary school. Those guys know grammar, my friend. They know punctuation. They know everything. They know how a sentence must sound like. Yeah. And if such people are coming forward, I mean, people like Pastor Chris there, if, if such people are coming forward to say, and Sister Juliet, he was one of our editors. Very good. Amen. Look at our books that we produced around 2012, 2013, 2014. I believe that they are solid, solid books. Somebody shout hallelujah. We have lawyers in this church that are helping us with legal services for free. For free. In their language, they call it pro bono. Pro bono. <laughs> As a service to mankind. 
as a service to God, as a service to the church. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Let's move to number five, the last one. Platforms for serving the Lord. Number five, the fruit bearing platform. The fruit bearing platform. The fruit bearing platform. This is about being profitable and helpful to God's work in whatever way possible. It may not be through any of the platforms that we have looked at, the prayer platform, the soul winning platform, the giving or resource platform, the talent and skills platform, but being generally profitable to the work of God, including making yourselves available for practical ministry. Making yourself available for practical ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 11, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 11, Paul is writing to Timothy, he says, get Mark and bring him with you for he is useful to me for ministry. It says Mark is useful to me for ministry. The King James Version will say he is profitable. He is profitable to me for the ministry. Yeah. He is profitable to me for the ministry. Ask your neighbor for me, are you profitable to God? Are you profitable to God? Don't be a liability in the church. Be an asset. Ask your neighbor, asset or liability? Asset or liability? Asset or liability? <laughs> Some people are liabilities. Don't be a believer who is a liability. Be a believer who is an asset. Somebody shout hallelujah. Have you ever asked yourself why the apostles under the leadership of James and Peter called a certain brother, Jose, they called him Barnabas. You remember? They called him Barnabas. Have you ever asked yourself why? In Acts chapter 4, verses 36 to 37. Acts chapter 4, verse 36 to 37. And Jose's, yeah, that was his name, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles. They had a naming ceremony for a grown up man by the name Jose's. And Barnabas means son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus. Why did they ever do this? Look at verse number 37. Now here it is. Having learned, he sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. After everybody gave, there was still a gap. Let's say maybe they were looking for 20 million kwacha. There was, after everybody gave, there was still a balance of 13 million kwacha. Everybody else gave seven million. And this fellow came to release 13 million. And the apostle said, now look, you are no longer Jose. You are now Barnabas, the son of consolation. <laughs> I pray for the rise of Barnabases. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some Barnabas are rising in the church. You could be one of them as said some Barnabas are rising in the church. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you receive the Barnabas anointing. I said may you receive the Barnabas anointing. May you receive the Barnabas grace. In the name of Jesus. Please you believe that. Can I hear a louder shout of amen. Please be seated. Now let's do this very quickly. Let's take what I'm calling laws 
of acceptable service. God must be served, but not anyhow. God must be served. We must serve God, but not anyhow. There are principles that should govern what would qualify as acceptable service before the Lord. And let's speak some of these very quickly. Number one is the law of passion. Whatever we are doing for God must be done with a passionate heart. And passion signifies inner fire and drive for tireless pursuit of the goal at hand. That is how I would define it. That inner fire and drive for tireless pursuit of the goal at hand. Passion, again, is not a gift, but a personal choice. A personal decision based on your strong conviction towards a given task. Please, if you want to serve God, do it with passion. Is it making sense here? Let us do it with passion. Do it with passion. Do it with passion. If there is anything you want to do in this kingdom, please do it with passion. In John chapter 4, verse number 34, Jesus called the work of God his food. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. That is what I call passion. That is doing God's work is the source of my satisfaction. What food does to hunger is what the work of God does to me. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Passion, passion, passion. Are you preaching? Preach with passion. I hope I'm preaching with passion. <laughs> You are, you are singing, do it with passion. You are leading intercession, do it with passion. Don't lead prayers as if you are sick. Dear friends, how are you? It's now time for intercession. Come on, go, go down and sit down. We need passion. 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 Your heart and mind must be in it. Amen? Number two, that was the law of passion. Number two, the law of endurance. The law of endurance. The law of hardness. The King James Version will use the word hardness. We are called to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus, isn't it? Second Timothy chapter two and verse number five. We cannot serve God acceptably if we are always looking for fault so a way out it is tough it is this you know it says if anyone competes in athletics he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules let's move on to verse number six mm. the hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops i'm talking to you shout hallelujah <laughs> can i have verses three to four Verses 3 to 4. Let's see what those verses are saying. You therefore, hear this, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardship. Endure hardship. Can we have it in King James Version? Thou therefore endure what? Hardness. Hardness. Life may be hard, but you must still avail yourself for service. Life may be hard. It was Job who said in Job 14, 14, when a man dies, shall he live again? Job 14, 14. Yeah. He says, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait till my change comes. We 
must preach in season and out of what? Season. We must serve God in season and out of season. Look at Apostle Paul. He had so many hardships and inconveniences, but he committed himself to the service of the house of God. We can look at several scriptures here. Um, let's begin with Romans chapter 8, for example. Um, we could have started from verse number 31 to 39, but let's look at verse 35. Romans chapter 8, verse number 35. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Look at this. Verse number 36. It says, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse number 37. Now hear this. It says, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Nothing will stop us from serving God. Nothing is going to separate us from this, our God, and our service to him. Our service to him. Let's have Second Corinthians chapter 11. We are reading from verse number 23, if, if possible. Verse 23, let's see. Yes. Reading down to 27. Are they ministers of Christ as speakers of fool? I am more. In labors more abundant. Have you seen that? In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequently. In deaths often. That is how Paul lived his life. But nothing stopped him from serving God. You have some small, small, small marital challenge. You sit down. Come on. Be serious. Tell your neighbor, be serious. Let's read on here. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, minus one, 39 stripes. You know, Paul was also a mathematician, isn't it? Instead of just telling us that 39 times is 40 minus one. Yes. Making use of his parents' school fees. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's read on. Glory to God. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day I have been in the deep. Verse number 26. Mm. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, he lived a perilous life. In perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Look at verse number 27. Now he says, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. My God, endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. If you are ever going to serve God, you need to observe the law of endurance. It's not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. Serving God is never easy. That is why you can never leave it to convenience. Never leave the issue of your service to God to convenience. To convenience. To convenience. It never works with convenience. It has to be in perils often. In perils often. In perils often. Hmm. All right, let's move on here. Tell your neighbor for me, serving God is serious business. It's serious business. Yeah, it's true. Number three, the law of willingness. Number one, the law of passion. I'm showing you laws for acceptable service before God. Number one, the law of passion. Number two, the law of endurance. Number three, the law of willingness. What must be done must be done with a willing heart. 
You remember, I gave you ex, uh, Exodus 25, verses 1 to 9, but let's read verse 2 again. Let's read verse 2 again of Exodus 25. Now, God is saying to Moses that you speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. Please hear me. It says, this offering must be received, please listen, from everyone who gives it willingly. It has to be with a willing heart, my friend. It can't be out of compassion. No. If you feel like somebody is forcing you, don't even do it. You will be wasting your time and your energy for nothing. Is it making sense here? Yes. So if you are ever going to do the work of God, please do it with a willing heart. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 17, Apostle Paul put it this way. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse number 17. Now listen to this. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. So kingdom service is rewardable, but only when you do it willingly. Only when you do it willingly, if I do this willingly, I have a reward. I have a reward. I have a reward. Number four, the law of love. The law of love. Love. L-O-V-E. The law of love. The law of love. We are not just serving him just for the sake of it. No. We must serve him because we love him. Our service to God must be love driven. Look at how Solomon gave to the Lord in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 3 to 6. 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 3 to 6. How did he give to the Lord? Now hear this. And Solomon loved the Lord. That is where it all begins from. Solomon loved the Lord and then he gave you remember a thousand burnt offerings but it began with Solomon loved the Lord that is why you must always beware of your motive for serving God what is my motive for serving him our service to God must be love driven must be love driven the Bible speaking in, um, in Matthew 22 let's see verse number 37 Matthew 22 verse number 37 yes Jesus said to him now here it is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind love love Serving God from a love platform. Serving him from a love platform. Mm. Number five, the law of joy. We must serve God joyfully. Joyfully and not grudgingly. It was Paul who said, do everything without murmuring. Without grumbling. We must serve God. God with joy, with joy. Deuteronomy 28, verses 47 to 48. Deuteronomy 28, verses 47 to 48. Serving God with joy. Number six is the law of faithfulness. The law of faithfulness. The Bible says it is required of stewards that a man be found faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. This work must be done with faithfulness. With faithfulness. With faithfulness. Now, God may not have given you what you are looking for, but still serve him. Amen? Serving God should not be conditioned on God giving you some things. Lord, if you don't give me a man to marry me this month, I will never serve you again. Okay. Okay, in any case, who are you? 
When did you come around? Do you think God is going to be stranded because you decided not to serve him? Okay, everyone clap for Jesus. Do you think it's everyone who clapped? No. For example, my brother here, the usher, did not clap. <laughs> Ask, no, no, please, please. Has it made any difference that he didn't clap? Uh -huh. So please humble yourself. Don't give God unnecessary admittance. If it doesn't happen this week, then I know what next to do. Just go ahead and do it. Don't waste God's ears. Is it making sense here? Let us serve him faithfully. Faithfully. Number seven is the law of righteousness. God is holy. And those who want to transact with him in his vineyard must commit themselves to holiness. He's a righteous God. The law of righteousness. In Leviticus 19, is it verse number 2? Leviticus 19 and verse number 2, God speaking to Moses. He says, speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy. For I, the Lord your God, am holy. So we are not talking about serving God anyhow, my friend. He's a holy God. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 15. Now hear this. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 15. The Bible says, but he who called you is holy. You also, listen to this, be holy in all your conduct. Be holy in all your conduct. Stay away from sin. Stay away from cutting corners. Stay away from sin. Stay away from cutting corners. Commit yourself to holiness and righteous living. Service to God must be done with righteousness. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28. Anyways, number eight, the law of wholeheartedness. Serving God must be done heartily with your whole heart. The law of wholeheartedness. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 6. Serving him must be with your heart. Your heart. Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 to 26. Mm. Number 9. The law of diligence or hard work. The law of diligence. The law of diligence. God does not like lessness, and that's why I also don't like it. I don't like working with lesser people, I must confess. I don't like working with lazy people. No. And there's no place for lazy men in the kingdom of God. Lessness must be avoided. Lessness must be hated. Lessness must be fought against. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I gave you 1 Corinthians 15, 58 at some point. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 58. We didn't read it, but let's read it. Therefore, my beloved brethren, now hear this. Be steadfast, immovable. Now hear this. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor, your labor, serving God is labor. And this labor must be discharged with diligence. 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 
In Proverbs 22, verse 29, reading from the King James Version. Proverbs 22 and verse number 29 from the King James Version. What does it say? Seest thou, now here it is, a man diligent in his business. We can't be lazy in our business. We must be diligent in our business. Diligent in our business. Diligent. It takes diligence to be distinguished. If you don't want to die a dwarf, you must subscribe to diligence. 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 Glory be to God. Let's take some few more here very quickly. Number 10 is the law of sacrifice. The law of sacrifice. God's work requires sacrifice. It doesn't work on the platform of convenience. It requires sacrifice. It requires sacrifice. Psalm 126 verses 1 to 6. Psalm 126 verses 1 to 6. Maybe the last one is the law of tirelessness. The law of continuity. The law of tirelessness. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 9. All right. Lastly, let us examine what I'm calling rewards for serving God. Rewards for serving God. Please, the reason why I have to touch on this very quickly is because I want us to know and to always remember that God is not an exploiter of his people. God does not exploit. God is not looking for who to abuse, who to exploit. God is a rewarder. God is a rewarder. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. Not an abuser and an exploiter. No, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You, you can't serve God well and not have him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You can't serve God and not have him say, well done. And well done of God is not empty, well done. Is it making sense here? In Matthew 25, verse 21 and 23. Matthew 25, verse 21 and verse 23. What does it say? He, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. And he did not end there. He said, you are faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. That is God for you. The same you read in verse number 23. Now, in Luke 19, verse 13. Luke 19 and verse number 13. What does it say? Now, this master called 10 of his servants and delivered to them 10 minors and said to them, do business till I come. King James will say, occupy till I come. Occupy, do business. We must do business for the Lord until he comes. He is coming again. We must do business for the Lord. We must do business for Jesus. But I have shown you what business we are talking about. We must do business for this Jesus till he comes. Now hear this. Let's have verse 17. Luke 19 and verse 17. That was verse 13. Ten minors were delivered. Now he said to him, now listen to this. Time for reckoning came. Time to give accounts came. And some fellow has, had, had, had profited from what he was given. Now hear this. Then the master said to him, well done, now hear this, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over 10 cities. So in this business of serving God, there is a reward of authority over 10 cities. Authority over 10 cities. And now, can I say this to you? God 
pays his workers well. And he gives you things money cannot buy, my friend. He gives you things money cannot buy. I'm telling you money cannot buy marital peace. Otherwise, all the rich people of this world would have enjoyed marital bliss like nobody's business. But ask them whether they have marital bliss. People run away from Area 43 where people, it is generally believed that people that live in places like Area 43, Area 10, these are well-to-do people. Am I right here? But people run away from there, sir. For some concubine somewhere at Chigiri. You know Chigiri is somewhere there. <laughs> Money and comfort in themselves cannot give you all that you need in this life. Serving God will give you benefits that money cannot buy. Now, before we begin to itemize some of those benefits very quickly here, let me emphasize this fact that God does not reward groups, but individuals. God does not reward groups, but individuals. He never says, well done, thou good and faithful servants. Huh? No soul. It's always well done, thou good and faithful servant. Servant. That is why we can be in a church where others are progressing, others are retrogressing. Others are progressing, others are retrogressing. I hope you are not among those who are retrogressing when your friends are progressing. God is changing people's lives in this church. That is the truth, my friend. And you must be among the number. But you must do the right thing. You must do the right thing. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In Revelation 22 verse 12. Revelation the 22nd chapter. And verse number 12. Jesus speaking he says. Behold I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me. Now here it is. To give to everyone according to his work. So these benefits are accorded to every person according to his or her work. Ask your neighbor, what is your contribution so far? Come on, ask your neighbor. And as they are, they are asking you, you have to answer them. What is your contribution so far? He does not bless groups. He blesses individuals. Matthew 24 verses 45 to 46. Matthew 24 verses 45 to 46. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Now here it is. Verse 46. Blessed is that servant it doesn't say blessed are those servants. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so done. Somebody shout hallelujah. Okay, let's quickly glean some benefits of serving God from several verses of scripture. Beginning with Exodus 23 verse 25. So please, it's a quick listing. I want us to spare some time to pray before our time for this service expires. Number one, divine health. Divine health. Thank God for aerobics, gym, and other technicalities that we engage in and I encourage us to do so all the time but I want you to know that there is a dimension that comes when you serve God that is the truth at least that is what God said in his word Hebrews 23 and verse number 25 it says you shall serve the Lord your God 
and he shall. Uh, did I say Hebrews? Exodus, sorry. Come on. Exodus 23, verse number 25. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. Now hear this. And he will take sickness away. Let God be true and every man a liar. Mm? Let God be true and modern civilization a liar. God told me that when I serve him, he shall take away cancer. He shall take away tuberculosis. He shall take away high blood pressure and hypertension. He shall take away arthritis, ulcers, skin disease, and migraine headaches. He said he shall take away sickness from me when I serve him. He's not a man to lie, nor a son of man to change his mind. Does he speak and not do it? Does he promise and not make it happen? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Divine health. Divine health. Number two. Success and prosperity. Success and prosperity. Job 36 and verse number 11. I read with you that verse of scripture. Success and prosperity. Yeah. We saw in Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33. Matthew 6 verse number 33 where the Bible says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which is about serving God and promoting his interests on earth and living a holy life. It says, and all these things that others are dying for shall be added to you. So many people are looking for prosperity. The formula is right there in Matthew 6 and 33. Seek first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6 and verse 33. Matthew 6 and verse number 33. The, this is the secret, the formula for true kingdom prosperity. Seek first the kingdom of God. We need to have a God first mentality. Come on. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all these things. Things to drink, when you read from verse number 25, things to eat and things to wear. Things to eat shall be added. Things to wear shall be added. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number three, honor. Honor. John chapter 12, verse 26, John, the 12th chapter, John chapter 12 and verse 26. If anyone serves me, this is Jesus. Come on, who should we believe? Is it Jesus or you? Huh? We can only believe you if what you are saying aligns with what Jesus said. Is, is, is it okay here? Now, if anyone serves me, come on, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. Now, hear this. If anyone serves me, this came from the mouth of Jesus. If anyone serves me, him, that fellow who is serving me, my father will honor. Lift your right hand. I decree this hour, may God honor you for all your service. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody is receiving financial honor. Somebody is receiving marital honor. Somebody is receiving career honor. Somebody is receiving the honor of good health. The honor of marital stability. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, I'm talking to you. Can I hear a louder shout of amen there? It says, my father who honor. And the Bible says that God gave Solomon honor. He's a giver of honor. However, God must honor you. I release it in the name of Jesus Christ. I release it in the name of Jesus. Now, apart from honor, we have double honor. Isaiah 61 and verse number 7. Isaiah 61 and verse number 7. Where the Bible says, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Lift your right hand. I release double honor upon your life. Double honor upon your families. Double honor upon your businesses. Double honor upon the works of your hands. 
in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout three times, I receive double honor. 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 The meaning is, if you're a committed child of God, serving the Lord, shame and humiliation and disgrace shall never come near you. I said they shall never come near you. Days of shame are over in your life. I said days of shame are over in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. If I'm talking to you, can I hear a louder shout of amen here? I said a louder shout of amen. Every plant anywhere in your life, not planted by God, sickness, disease, poverty, rejection, confusion, frustration, financial hardship, is uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. I uproot it in the name of Jesus. Every door that will shut against you, I command it open right now. I command it open right now. I command it open right now. Somebody shout three times, my doors are open. You believe that? Put your hands together for the King of Kings. And you may please be seated. Hallelujah. Number, number four. Is it number four? Divine preservation. Divine preservation. Divine preservation. Divine preservation. God is talking to the devil. Remember in Job chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. Job, Job, J O B, chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. Can I have verse number 8, please? Verse number 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, Look at that. Have you considered my servant Job? Have you seen that, sir? Job, the richest man of his time, was a servant of God. And you are not as rich as Job. You don't want to serve God. There is something wrong with your, what the biologists call medulla oblongata. Your medulla may need attention. <laughs> Somebody shout out here. Yes, sir. The richest man of his time was a servant of God. God called him my servant. Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth? A blameless and upright man. One who fears God and shuns evil. What was the devil's response? Verses 9 to 10, please. He said, does Job fear God for nothing? Now hear this. Verse number 10. Have you not made a hedge around him? God makes a hedge around his servants. And I can tell you that if you are a servant of God, you are well secure. I tell your neighbor, we are, we are well secure. We are safe. That is why as for me, I sleep like a baby. I don't expect any evil to happen, sir. Because there is a hedge around me. You come near it, you are slaughtered by fire. I decree this hour, any power lifting his finger against you shall go down by fire. I said it shall go down by fire. I said it shall go down by fire. In the name of Jesus. Can you imagine that you are sleeping and you are dreaming masquerades sitting on your head Come on, not a servant of God. Come on, somebody shout, I am a servant of God. Say that louder, I am a servant of God. And tell your neighbor, don't mess with me, don't mess with me, don't mess with me. I'm a servant of God. There's a hedge of protection around my life. God watches over me with an eye of jealousy. The Bible says, whoever shall injure Jerusalem shall injure himself. 
Anyone who shall ever dare injure you shall injure himself. I said they shall injure themselves. I said they shall injure themselves. In the name of Jesus Christ. If I'm talking to you, shout amen three times. Sit down, friends. Let's finish. Let's finish. Number one, divine health. Number two, success and prosperity. That is well-being. Because if they obey and serve him, they shall spend all their days in prosperity and their years in what? Pleasures and not pressure. There's a difference between pressure and pleasure. That's your, your, your number two. Number three is honor. Marital honor, financial honor. Where well, God gives you the honor of well-behaved children. My God, what an honor. God has given us, some of us, that dimension of honor. Well-behaved children. No headaches around our teenagers. No headaches. It's an honor from heaven, sir. It's an honor. May you enjoy that honor. Amen. Number four is divine preservation. Divine preservation. Please capture Psalm 89, verses 20 to 23. Now hear this. Number five is divine presence and backing. Divine presence and backing. I can give you several scriptures, but let me give you Mark 16, verse 20. Mark 16 and verse 20. But you capture from verse 15 so you put 15 to 20 15 to 20 because it is in verse 15 that he gave the marching orders to go and preach unto all creation now hear this in obedience to that no please put verse 20 back but in obedience to that instruction verse 20 please now they went out have you seen it son they went out to serve him. They preached everywhere. Now listen to this. It says, the Lord working with them. The Lord working with them. That is, they enjoyed his presence. They enjoyed his presence. He accompanied them on that assignment. He accompanied them on that assignment. In Matthew 28, verse 20, he said, Lo, I am with you always. When you go to carry out this work, I will be with you always until the end of the age. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You enjoy divine presence. You remember when Joshua responded to the call of God in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9, Joshua 1, verses 1 to 9, you remember what God said to him. He said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Yes. And in verse number 9, put verse number 9 there, Joshua 1 and verse number 9. What did he say? He said, look at the last part of it. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So wherever I am, I'm conscious of his presence. That is why I am not shaken. I cannot be shaken. Is he making sense? No one can intimidate me, sir, because I am conscious of his presence with me as his servant. As his servant. That is why the other day I preached to you on the subject, relax. God is in control, sir. Relax. Tell your neighbor, relax, relax. It shall turn out as you expect it. It shall turn out as you expect it. So relax. Relax. We have not believed cunningly devised fables, my friend. Relax. God is for us. God is with us. God is for us. And God is with us. So tell your neighbor, relax, relax, relax. Relax. Number six. Promotions. Promotions. I gave you scriptures. I don't have to repeat. Luke 19, verse number 17. Matthew 25, verse 21 and 23. Promotion. 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 Isn't it wonderful 
that there is an explosion of promotions in this house. It's true, sir. It's true. My daughters are settling in Maritale. It's a promotion. Not everyone is married. Do I have to remind you? My sons and daughters are becoming chief executives, heads of institutions. Promotions in career, promotions. Some of you that had no money, now you have some money. I didn't want to say a lot of money, but you have some money. <laughs> huh? Tell your neighbor, I have money, I have something, I have something. <laughs> promotions of all kinds. Number seven, deliverance from bondage. Deliverance from bondage. Luke chapter 1, verses 74 to 75. Deliverance from bondage. We don't have time at all. Number eight is divine empowerment for enhanced productivity. John 15, 2. Jo John 15, 2. Divine empowerment for enhanced productivity. If you have captured that, please, with a loud shout to Jesus, rise on your feet. Come on. I said once you have written... I said divine empowerment. Some of you, 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 you did not do speed writing, isn't it? So please, please, please write, write this. Divine empowerment. <laughs> divine empowerment for enhanced productivity. And the scripture is what? John 15 and verse number 2. John 15, verse number 2. Now, somebody give the Lord a loud shout of praise. Lift your voice and appreciate the King of Kings for speaking to us this morning. Lift your voice, somebody, please. Let's do this quickly. Lift your voice. Let's appreciate God for speaking to us this morning. He's a good God. He's a good God. Celebrate Him. Shakata ragade de besinda rikata ragade. Zakata ragade masata ragade bakata ragade Zakata ragade masata ragade mashakata ragade Lubasa ragade bakata ragade de bosaya Zakata ragade masata ragade Lubasa ragade de shakata ragade Masata ragade bakata ragade bakata ragade Sakata ragade makata ragade makata ragade Shakata ragade makata ragade makata ragade Yakata ragade makata ragade masata ragade Lipa salagade shakata ragade Yakanda ligade de makata ragade Sakata ragade bakata rigada ragada ragade le gona ragada Shakata ragada basuta ragade 